Okay, guys, this one might be controversial. If you watched my last video about Cycles X, you know render times are dropping dramatically. If you haven't watched my video about Cycles X, go watch it. It's ridiculously awesome. Cycles X, Blender 3.0, experimental version. It's cutting render times down and cycles by. 25, 50, 75, I've heard up to 90% render time reduction on super heavy loads. So if you haven't watched that one, check that one out first. It's way more important. If you're already up to date to Cycles X, then this one might take what you're already doing, dropping your render times by 90% and take that and cut it in half by another 50%. What am I talking about? Artificial intelligence, Blender. Those three words you better get used to because the future is a changing. My friends, we are living in a renaissance of video production, 3D production, anything moving image. Consider yourself goddamn lucky. What am I talking about today? Machine learning. Everything from upscaling to color correction, noise reduction. But today we're talking about frame interpolation. What is frame interpolation? It's essentially an AI guessing and interpreting between two frames. So frame 300 is right here. Frame 301 is right here. It can guess that in between that frame 300.5 is probably right in the middle. So it'll guess. And there's been lots of different methods of frame interpolation over the years and they've worked to varying degrees, but my friends, I'm pretty sure they've cracked it because what this free software that I've got for you today, it essentially blends frames 100% clearly. As long as there's no crazy motion in there, it's undetectable. So what am I bringing you today? Software called Flow Frames. It's ridiculously awesome. It's free, it's downloadable. Trusted link in description, download it. What does it even do? So imagine that you render out your entire animation takes about 4.5 seconds per frame. You got 250 frames. What if you cut that down and you rendered only every other frame? Then you sent it through the AI software, asked it to interpolate in between those, and it did it. That would be pretty sick. And that's what I'm here to show you today. Flow frames, let's get into it. I've downloaded this model from Sketchfab. I'll also include the link down there. It's an amazing model by an amazing artist. Go give him respect, drop a like. It's a beautiful model. It looks like crap in EV, but when we switch over to cycles, beautiful. Looks gorgeous. I just threw a regular old HDRI on there uh, from HDR Haven. It's the uh, White Cliff Top 4K HDR. Grab that if you want. You're seeing to match exactly what I'm rolling here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do an example case today. We're gonna render this out together and we're gonna see what we can't figure out. So first of all, we're going to create a little folder. So this is just the full 24 per second, 250 frames. And we're just gonna go ahead and go up. I've already set my keyframes. So we've got this nice little swift motion just arcing around the castle. Nothing too special, nothing too fancy. Just a nice little animation. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna render this out, we're gonna see how long it takes, and we're gonna see what it looks like compared with flow frames. Let's go. It's like talking, or should we just fast forward through this? Fast forward, uh, fat, I'm hearing fast forward. I also have a Patreon. If you wanna be the first to subscribe to it, we're gonna start putting Adobe Premiere tutorials, separate tutorials, artificial intelligence tutorials, deep fakes, all sorts of things. If you guys are interested in any of that, hit me up on Patreon. Come be my first patron. All right, we did it. 250 frames rendered. Took about 4.5 seconds of frame, roughly 18 and a half, 19 minutes. As you see, very straightforward, simple render. Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna go up here and you're gonna see, you got your rendered tab and you're gonna see that you got your output tab. I lower mine in cycles uh quick tip for you guys resolution here if you don't want to change your actual resolution if you but you don't want it to be 1080p you can just take this percent slider slide it down you know most of you probably know about that but some of you don't might help you out i keep mine at 80 usually but then there's this button you might not see and you know you see frame start you see frame end here but then you see step you ever wondered what step is you ever play with it step is how many frames will jump in between so right now it jumps one frame and renders one frame if we were to press two, it would render every other frame, every third frame, every fourth frame, and so on. So for this example, we're gonna set it to step two, and we are going to render every other frame, and we're gonna interpolate those frames. We're gonna take a look at both renders, and we're gonna see what it looks like. Is this an acceptable method? Subscribe and find out. Every time you subscribe, I buy Scrooge McDuck's money bin for half the value, then I turn it all into Bitcoin, and I lose it gambling. I'm a mess. Please subscribe. Back 
the blender. So, set your step to two. We are going to make another folder. That way I know this is the every other frame and we're gonna go ahead, accept that. And we're gonna render that out. And we're gonna do it one more time. See you in one sec. When I'm done with this, I'm gonna take each of these image sequences. I'm gonna throw them in Adobe Premiere, render them out in H.264. And I'm going to then throw it in flow frames and stretch it out in Premiere and see which one we like, guys. We did one 250 frame render on an RTX 2070 Super. It took 18 and a half minutes. We did the exact same render, the exact same frames per second, 4.5, and it took us nine minutes and a quarter. So let's round that off. Let's call it nine minutes and 18 minutes. We saved nine minutes by only rendering every other frame of our little animation. Nine minutes, that is not insubstantial, my friends. Open up flow frames and let's see what flow frames can do for us. We are going to go ahead and it's got the welcome screen. It's got interpolation, quick settings, preview, and about. We're just going to click on this interpolation tab. You've got browse folder. That's if you want to bring in multiple files. And you got browse video if you just want to bring the one. So we are going to go ahead, open that up, go into where we saved it, and we're going to find our yes terps. Five second video, seven megabytes. We're going to bring it in. So now we brought it in, you can see that it's, it reads at 24 frames per second. And now this is where we can choose. Do we want to do 2x, 4x, or 8x? For this example, we're only going to do 2x, but I suggest that you play around with the 8x because it's very fun. So for the purposes of right now, we're just going to do 2x. You don't have to click an output folder. It's just going to output it with a different naming convention. So now that it's in there, we select point two or x2 and go ahead and click right there here to this interpolate and we save nine minutes this is going to get us those nine minutes equivalent let's see how long it takes in the equivalent runtime so we save nine minutes and now we have to put those right back into it how much time does it take to get those nine minutes it is done Total processing time of 16 seconds. Let's add on another five for the boot up there. Let's call it, you know, 21 seconds. So we essentially took nine minutes and we reduced that down to 21 seconds. Nothing set yet. We have to, the proof is in the pudding. So let's go ahead and let's drag in the footage and let's see what happens. Let me see that beautiful bean footage. I'm going to drag into the timeline. Let's take a look at the animation together. Let's see what it looks like. Nice smooth camera movement. Just arcs over, arcs right back down. Beautiful. All right, guys. Now let's take in our clip that was five seconds, but now instead of being 24 frames per second, it is now 48. I'm gonna use the rate stretch tool and I'm gonna stretch it right back out to double little under 50% down to 49.6 match it back up and now let's take a look at what the interpolated footage comes is it gonna look good is it gonna look like crap what do you think this was a five second animation that had half the data of the original and we stretched it out are you ready let's check it out so far so good looks pretty smooth i don't see much warble i saw a little glitch in there that might have just been the playback software pretty sick let's watch it again starts out unbelievable can't see any difference i see a little click at the peak of the camera transition so that little bit of camera movement might have thrown it through a loop right there right but who knows that could be my machine let's render it out and let's let's take a look just all by itself this one's the non-interpolated footage no little hitch at the little parabolic top of that looks pretty freaking good now let's see the interpolated looks amazing all throughout the front it's got that little teeny click at the top there. The problem there is because when we're doing essentially a 12 frame per second render, you guys can imagine what 12 frames per second looks like chugging like that. So when the camera goes from this arc to this arc, it's missing, 
it misses that frame and it has no data to interpolate between those two segments. So it has one that's kind of flat and one that's kind of flat and it doesn't know that in the middle it would just be a perfect arc so it interpolates the frames that are missing right in between there. So I guess what we're seeing there is that if you have a scene that has a straightaway, if it has not super specific fancy camera movement, I think it's a it's a obvious win, right? We took even if that little little frame there and we could fix that, we could re-render those three frames and still, I mean, at four seconds, if we had to put three frames in there, that's adding back in what, 12 seconds, 13 and a half seconds, all said and told. And considering that That little teeny hiccup is all that I'm graping about. So you guys can see the power of what I'm talking about. Frame interpolation, it's insane. Maybe soon we can talk about upscaling, how you can take EV, render one frame in cycles, and then tell AI, please render all of my EV animations exactly in the same style as the cycles animation. You would be shocked how good it works. Artificial intelligence, get used to it. Did you learn something? Subscribe. Every time you subscribe, Darkwing Duck becomes real and he freaks out he's a fucking duck. Thank you guys for watching. You're all the shit. My name's Josh Grambo. Peace.